king. They knew him, but they didn't know him. They wanted a savior, and he was that man. He was the one that was prophesied to come in riding on a donkey colt. They just didn't understand to the depths and to the degree of who he was. During that time, the the high priest and the people of authority in the town uh, persuaded the people, moved the people, and uh, just a few days later, they're hollering out, crucify him. Well, that, I tell you that whole story in Scripture to tell you what God revealed to me. You know, a lot of us, you know, we go through problems, situations of our own doing or situations that are of the, the world's doing. We live in a, a fallen world, a, a world that uh, we're going to encounter situations and circumstances that are beyond our control. I'm going to go through them. I have gone through them. Currently going through things. Y'all are going to go through them. Y'all are going to go uh, through things. Probably right now you're going through things. and uh, I know you probably have gone through plenty of things that the world has to offer you. And in those times, so often, you know, we cry out, save us, please save us. We're saying Hosanna to God. Even if we didn't know what the word meant. We're saying, save us, please save us. We want out of this addiction. We want out of this prison. We want out of this uh, abuse. Save us from our anger. Save us, save us from our hate. Save us, Lord. We need you physically to, to save me because I need food or I need water. Or I need electricity to be paid for. I need this, I need that. And just like the people... In Jerusalem at that time, they were wanting saving. They were wanting saving from their situation, poverty. They were wanting saving from Roman rule. They wanted to operate under a better life. They were looking at it from an outward. They didn't know that Jesus was going to save their soul, that Jesus was going to fill them and create them new. We got the Word of God, and we know that. We know that Jesus, uh, we know that he, he is, uh, He's done all these things, not only to, to help us with our physical, outwardly things, but more importantly, to help us with our heart, to create us new, to move us. And so I got to thinking about this, this whole picture. I got to thinking about how uh, they, they ushered them in in their time of need, And then just a few days later, they're saying, crucify him. So I started thinking about the men, the women, you know, uh, even myself, you know, where there's been times that I'm I'm fervent in prayer and uh, pleading with God, Lord, help me in this situation. Lord, move in this situation. God, I need you. I want you to come in and make a difference in my life. And, uh, And then he does, you know. God hears our prayer, and God does move, and God does make a difference. But... How easy is it for us to, once we're on top again, once things are running smooth again, how easy is it for us to uh, all of a sudden start thinking that we had something to do with that? You know, that we made that happen. And then we say, okay, Jesus, we're kicking you out the saddle for a little while. We're going to hop on. And when we do that, in in our heart, we're not saying it verbally, but in our heart, in our actions, in our motives, we're saying crucify him, crucify him. When we do that, we're crying out, crucify him. And when I realized that, when God showed me that the other day, man, it was such a, just a powerful thing. It made me start thinking about all of my actions, all of the things that I do. I started thinking, well, God, I don't want to crucify you. I know that my sin, past, present, future, and everybody else's sin, past, present, future, I know that it... That's what took you to the cross because you knew that we couldn't do it ourselves. Your love for us held you there because you wanted to make a way for us. But God, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that. And I got to thinking about y'all and thinking about other people. And I just know y'all don't want that either. You know? Uh, So when I was listening to that song and I realized that, that that word Hosanna meant save me, save me please. 
such a deep word, then I was able to enter into a praise and worship in that song towards the Lord in such a deep way that it made just an enormous impact on me and my focus and my drive for the Lord. And uh, Jesus said it Himself. He said it in, uh, in that word we just read. He said, out of the mouth of babes and, and, and young infants did He perfect perfect praise. And how many of us want to praise Jesus perfectly? How many of us want to be like little children, like those little children, and, and for Jesus to say, no, I want to hear them praise. So, I got a real short message tonight because I hope and pray that that little tidbit of, uh, of uh, what God revealed to me uh, would impact you in a very powerful way. And, uh, and if you're going through something right now, if you're dealing with something right now in your life where you've been putting Jesus in that situation where you're saying crucify Him, crucify Him, He's here right now and He wants to, he wants to be there with you, you know? He wants, to, he wants to hear you say, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. He wants to, to hear you cry out to Him, Lord I, Lord, I know I need you. Save me from this situation. Save me. Lord, I'm not going to get back in the saddle. Lord, I'm going to say Hosanna, and I'm going to cry out Hosanna every day. I don't, want to, I don't want to cry out, crucify you anymore. I want to be the example. I want to be the, the living new created man or woman that you've called me to be. I want for people to see that I'm crying out Hosanna through my words and my actions. You know, God is so faithful to be there for us. If we do it, He says that He'll, be, he'll make us more than conquerors. In perfect praise, in perfect worship, in, in following Him, He'll bring us through He'll bring us through all things. Even in the bad things, He'll bring us through. So, what we're going to do is uh, uh, some of the leaders, maybe y'all stand up. You know, we're going to turn the lights out. Go ahead and turn the lights out. We're going to play that song, Hosanna, again. But this time, if you didn't do it before, this time, when you're singing Hosanna, I want you to sing this to the Lord. I want you to say, God, thank you for saving me. Those who are saved in here, those who are born again, this is a time for you to praise Him and say, thank you for saving me from that old way. Thank you for saving me from that drug addiction or that alcohol addiction or that sex addiction or that anger problem or whatever it is, you put it in there and you say, God, thank you. And you cry out Hosanna like you ain't never cried out Hosanna before and praise God tonight. And God's going to move in your life. It's that simple. And so I just want to encourage you and uh, we're going to play that song. And, and if, if God's been speaking to you or moving in you, of course there's people here that would love to pray with you or talk to you, love on you, be there for you. You need a friend? There's friends here. And uh, so I just wanted to encourage y'all on that.
Well, amen. God, we just thank you, Lord. We're thankful, Lord, that we get to cry out, Hosanna, God. Lord, you have saved us. You've set us free. John 8, 36, those who have been set free are free indeed. God, we are free indeed tonight, God, and we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, so much, Lord, that you have such a deep desire to work in us and through us, God. Lord, I just love these people here, God. I pray blessings upon them, Lord. I pray change in their life, in sin attachments or darkness attachments, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would release them from that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know that the devil has to run and flee for fear. Lord, we just pray that out loud. We profess it, Lord. We speak your truth back to you, God. Walls be shattered. Lord, tonight, God, we pray, God, that uh, there would be revival inside of our heart, Lord. That you would stir up in us, Lord. That you would move in us in such a deep way, God, that we wouldn't be able to do anything but just cry out Hosanna and praise and, God, perfect praise, God. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing, God. We thank you for what you're going to do, God. I pray safety over each person in here. Lord, I pray that you uh, watch over them during the week at their job, at their house. Lord, wherever they may go, Lord, I pray that you would make light shine from them, Lord. I pray that any rotten branches be cut down and thrown in the fire, Lord, and they could, everybody could produce such good nourishing fruit for, for everybody else in this community, Lord. Lord, you could just do such wonderful things, Lord, if we would just get in the right position, God, right where you need us to be. So, Lord, I just thank you tonight, God, and I praise you and I lift your name such high as, high as I can, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Before Brother Ivan comes and dismisses us, we're going to take up an offering. Thank you, Brother Nathan, for the word. Such a relevant word. Aren't you thankful that Jesus sets free? That he has come to set the captive free. Amen. Let me just say we welcome everybody here tonight, and especially if I see some new faces. We want to thank you for being here. Good to see Brother John Nesbitt back here with us tonight. Appreciate you, brother. And... Uh, I would say this also, if you do not have a home church, we would love to have you here. Our service is Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, and we hopefully will see you then. I and mean, if you do have a church, we, we want you to be faithful to that church. Amen? Faithful to your pastor and uh, be connected to that body. But if you don't, we sure would love to have you, and Brother John would love to have you too. Amen. Get in a church. Get rooted and grounded in the church. But, and it's very important. We want to take up this offering. This offering goes for things to advance the kingdom of God and the ministry of TGIF Recovery.